lot of different ways out there to fling foam. Of course, you've got the most ubiquitous, which is the Springer Blaster, which uses a spring-powered plunger in a plunger tube in order to deliver air pressure to a dart. Then there's, of course, flywheels, which use spinning flywheels, where a dart gets shoved between them and it goes launching. You've even got the Stringers that use, well, bungee cord in order to propel a dart. But there is one that's somewhat forgotten. It's solely coming back. I mean, the, apparently the mediator barrel for the Nerf Modulus that's coming out is actually an air-powered blaster, and Nerf has still been doing air-powered blasters in the form of the high air pressure manual pumps, or HAMP, which is things like the Demolisher Front Missile Launcher and the Tri-Strike Missile Launcher and all of the things that suck. They work, but they're not very good. How about something like this? This is your prototypical air blaster. It's one of the oldest systems that has been used to propel foam darts, and it does it pretty darn well. In this case, it's the Busby Panther. The way this thing works is you put a dart in the barrel, you pump it up several times until you can't pump it anymore or it makes a squeak, and then you pull the trigger, which releases all the air pressure into a dart and fires it. Now, stock, these things are absolutely pathetic. Where these things get interesting is when it's modded, because this is something that's relatively easy to mod and will hit over a hundred feet. That's no joke, these little pistols, these ergonomic nightmares are capable of delivering dark death up to a hundred feet in this really small package. So yeah, air pressure is awesome. Now, not all air blasters are created equal, and there's some different ways they work. This is what's known as a back pressure tank, which is kind of complicated, and I don't even fully understand it, and I'll probably sound like a moron trying to explain it, and probably get stuff wrong, but the way it works is when you pull the trigger, there's a little button up here that's connected to the tank, and when you press on that button, it releases a little bit of air pressure, which causes a vacuum kind of piston at the front of it to move, which opens up the biggest hole, which is where all the air rushes out into the dart. And, well, because of that, you can take the little button, because it's on its own little separate thing, and you can move it pretty much anywhere, and then have any kind of trigger press on that button, or just press it with your hand. And this is what, like, the Extreme Blast Zooka from Busby and stuff uses. It's a very common setup, and people really like them. They're very powerful. They do have some minor issues delivering air pressure, because sometimes when you press in the button, they leak air. So if they're too overpressured, then you can't press in the button, which is the thing we had go wrong with the whole Boomco burst wave. But that's just one type, and it's very popular because you can make them into pretty much whatever you want. So people tend to really like them. It isn't the only kind, though. Well, this is a treasure you've probably seen before, but if for some reason you haven't, this is the Nerf N-Strike ASV-1 Titan. This thing is meant to shoot a big freaking missile, and it's part of a whole system of blasters called the Unity Power System, in which you put a Hornet down on the bottom here, which we'll talk about later, and even has a reverse rail on the side where you can put pretty much any blaster, but the one it comes with was, of course, the Scout Pistol. And it's really freaking cool. And these are well-loved blasters, because this thing's meant to shoot a big missile, so of course it's got a big air tank to deliver big air volumes. The pump is right here in the back. You're meant to kind of like put your feet on this thing and pump it until it's full and pick it up and pull the trigger to fire it, and it works pretty darn well, and everybody loves these things, because they're relatively easy to come by, and they're pretty simple to mod. Once again, it's just an air blaster, so essentially all you would have to do is replace the barrel to shoot foam darts, but there are varying levels. For example, if you fix the pump, as in you plug the pump, plug the overpressure release valve in the pump, which prevents you from overpressurizing the tank, you get even more distance out of it, although you then run the risk of if you pump it way too much beyond what it can take, it will explode on you. Now, this being a conveniently made tank from a company, they're kind of under safety standards. They will explode in ways that are perfectly safe for explosions, as opposed to if you try to make an air tank yourself out of like PVC, you know, something that's not regulated to actually handle air pressure, those could explode into nice little sharp pieces that could possibly kill you because you basically turned your blaster into a grenade. Now that we've touched on that morbid little fact, the Titan is awesome because, well, they have massive air tanks in them. They're like the size of a Coke can. Everybody loves the Titan. Everybody does. It's very easy to mod, they're easy to come by. The problem is that they contain too much power. The Titan is capable of delivering darts upwards of 400-something FPS. 
So uh, yeah, they're usually banned from shooting single darts, and we'll talk about the singled versus other things in a moment, but the Titan is ubiquitous. People love it, people use it, and they're just super fun, and, and really there's not a whole lot of bad things to say about Titan. It's not the best, but it's really good and easy to come by, so people tend to use a lot of them. This uses a slightly different system, though. It doesn't use a button like that's on the air tank like the last blaster it actually has a pin coming out of the back of the tank and when you pull the trigger you're actually pulling that pin back and at the front of that pin is like a little rubber washer which when you pull that back will remove the washer that seals in the front of it and all the air pressure will dump out the front this is pretty good except for if the pin gets bent or anything like that it has a tendency to leak and you can't really change where the firing mechanism is you always have to have something connected to that pin to fire it so they're less awesome than what they could possibly be, but they're still pretty darn good. And if you want to deliver darts, uh, pretty much this is one of the best things. People don't like pumps. That's somewhat understandable. I get why people don't want to have actual, you know, exercise when it comes to firing your blaster. They just want to have either a pump action springer that they can fire off rounds after rounds or a flywheeler, which they just rev it up and pull the trigger and dump all the darts as fast as possible. But those will never reach the uh, performance levels of Titan can not in their wildest dreams. This thing will hit way harder than those ever possibly will, and all you have to do is pump a couple of times in between that. But of course, if that's a big issue for you, air compressors are a thing. You can electronically set up a compressor in here that will fill up the tank automatically. Now, in the terms of a Titan, which uses a rigid air tank, there's not a whole lot in there to stop the compressor from just blowing the tank open. So that's something you have to be very careful about. Having some kind of pressure monitor or something on there would be very, very important. Uh, the Titan does have some kind of, it kind of freaking works, but has a power gauge right there. Uh, you want to set that up with like an actual pneumatic pressure gauge. So, oh, it's up to whatever PSI shut it off or figure out a way to have an electronical one that will automatically shut it off, which would probably be better. Uh, that's why I like the Mazooka so much, which has a similar style tank. However, it dumps air way faster than a Titan ever could, and it's in a much more compact, easy-to-use package. Uh, Mazookas are the best. Titans are pretty good. But that's not the only way you can shoot air-powered foam darts out of these kinds of things. This is something that's a little bit in between what we had first and then, of course, the Titan. I think it's still kind of a back pressure tank. I honestly don't know. It's really weird. This is the Hornet. I've already done videos on this entire thing, but basically, you pump it up like you would any other air blaster. You push this forward, push it back, and it's semi-auto. So you fill up all six barrels right there, and once you pump it up, every time you pull the trigger, it fires a dart, which is freaking cool. Or if you just want to fire all your darts at once... You just slam that button right there, and it launches a shotgun shot of darts. This is one of my favorite blasters. I really wish it was super strong and powerful. It's one of those that requires a lot more effort than you would possibly want to make it really powerful, almost a complete overhaul, which is why this thing kind of fell by the wayside. But man, if it's not comfy, cool looking, and has a really cool gimmick. The coolest thing about this is every single one of these barrels is its own air tank. So when you're pumping it, you're pumping up six barrels or six air tanks all at once and that's awesome because then you can fire one of them and you can fire one dart at maximum velocity and there's no loss in pressure because all of them their own individual air tanks unlike other multi-firing blasters that do this where as time goes on the actual air source gets weak and then you wind up having darts that basically do nothing because there's no air left and then the blaster will cease to work this doesn't have that problem i love the hornet i wish there was something more you could do with it and unfortunately, I just, I, I haven't seen anything quite yet that made me go, okay, I need to work on a Hornet, because these things are just, they're just a nightmare inside. Have you ever seen the inside of a Hornet? It looks like something from freaking, ugh, the sci-fi movie, a bad one with aliens that kill people. Well, here's something that's a little bit different. This is the Busby Air Warriors Destiny. I don't think they're making this anymore, but it's only like a year old. You can probably still find them in some places. This was, I picked up from Walmart last summer, but... The Destiny is pretty cool because in like the other ones that we just looked at, it doesn't use a rigid air tank. It actually uses an air bladder, like a rubber bladder that fills with air as you pump it up with this massive pump right here. Uh -huh. And well, it shoots darts and it shoots them in a pretty spectacular way that's a bit different than the last blasters, which were all meant on delivering air power from a whole tank into one dart. This, the air bladder system, will allow you to fire basically this entire clip, this 20 dart clip, off one full air tank, or air bladder in this case, which is awesome. And basically, as you fire it, it will feed the clip through 
until it's empty or until you run out of air. It kind of works either way. And these are awesome. Now, the range is not exactly that good at all. The, the range is, it's like 60 feet. It's not really competitive in anything that you have wide open areas where people can take you out. But when it comes to like fast firing with minimal any kind of upkeep, I mean, you pump it. That's it. You don't have to worry about batteries dying. You really don't even have to worry about maintenance on these things all that much. It's just an air-powered blaster. It works. That's what it's supposed to do. And to mod these things, you basically just rebarrel all these barrels, which kind of sucks. Uh, that can get expensive, but out of the box, whatever, it works. But it's basically an SMG. It's bigger than any SMG, but it basically is. It hoses darts down, you know, 10 darts, 12 darts a second, no problem effortless to work and people love them. Mag strikes are still very popular and if you want to be a complete, complete master of everything, you can always hook these up to what's known as a high air pressure system or an HPA, whatever that stands for, where you basically have your air tank on your back, like a big one, like what you'd use for scuba diving or paintball or anything like that. And then you basically just have endless fire power and you can dial those in to have even more fire rate and more power because HPA stuff generally with all the regulators and stuff you have to install in these things you can dial them into pretty much anything they'll do basically what the last blasters did and this blaster all in one so it's a very flexible system I'm not a huge fan of it but I know a lot of people are it kind of invalidates the point of modding something like this but again not a whole lot of people are gonna dump the hundreds of dollars required to get into HPA so what the heck ever destiny mag strike things like the rapid fire 20 are all really cool blasters that are just a different way of flinging foam darts with air pressure instead of one dart really really far this is lots of darts really really fast and i happen to really enjoy that there is one last type we should probably talk about i don't even think i can get this entire thing in frame no i literally can't get this entire blaster in frame some of you may know what this is um if you don't this is a hydro cannon a Nerf Super Soaker Hydro Cannon. Yes, this is meant to shoot water. Why would I be talking about this now? Well, obviously, if it can shoot water, it uses some kind of air pressure, right? I mean, most of the time, Super Soakers do. And in this case, you've got this very long pump right here that you pump up until you can't pump it up anymore. You pull the trigger and it releases air. And then of course that will be pressurized with the water you have in the reservoir and it will spray water at a pretty reasonable distance. This is one of the last really good super soakers that Nerf made before they just went crazy and started making absolute garbage for several years. It's not that old and they're not really terribly impossible to come by. You can still find them on eBay and stuff like that, but due to their size and their relatively expensive price when they first came out, they're not super common either. You can find them if you're looking for them on like eBay and stuff like that, but it took me years to find one at the thrift store. And I finally do have a couple of them, which is great because obviously these things are, well, the first time I learned anything about a hydro cannon was from Bubba Lolo's Wrecked video, where he had a war with no bannings whatsoever. You could use whatever flung foam darts. And uh, the hydro cannons are, well, they're probably not the most powerful, but it's the most powerful thing I could possibly think of. It uses an air bladder like the last blaster, but instead of using that to fire 20 or 30 darts, it uses it to fire basically one. Of course, when you pump these things up over time, you're basically just releasing a floodgate of water. The bladder will, you know, expand with air pressure and water and will slowly constrict and shoot water out. And the way this thing works is once you use it with air pressure, it just instantly contracts because you broke the seal and it will fire a dart. And these things are capable of hitting upwards of 650 FPS. That is, that is lethal. Not, not literally lethal, but it is extremely powerful. Very, very powerful for a foam dart. In fact, in the video in question, which I'll have linked in the description below or in the card in the corner, it managed to pierce through a freaking like tarp setup 150 feet away with a glue dome stepping. This is not something you would ever be able to single and use in pretty much any other war. I know a lot of you are like, oh, drain blasters. Drain blasters are cool. They're basically titans. This is not that. This is something completely different. They require a lot of pumps to get up to that pressure. And my gosh, do they reward you for it because they are just the best. Uh, you want to fire the 
most amount of power dart, I think this is pretty much it. I don't know if this can actually be rivaled. And there are other blasters that are very similar to these, other super soakers, especially old ones that use the same kind of system. And even some newer ones are probably very similar. I don't know which super soakers make good dart shooters or not. I just know this is one of the best ones. And it's awesome, and they're still relatively acquirable. But the main point is that obviously if you single this, nobody would let you use it. So how are some ways that you can make this actually fieldable in war and have a special use? And that's through the use of something called an absolver, which is a multi barreled attachment that you could put on the front of a blaster, usually made out of either PVC with lots of little PVC pipes, or using something like a pre-existing spring-powered blaster turret, like a Maverick cylinder, which are capable of delivering six darts and they're all airtight, so you could slap it on the front of this using some attachments and PVC, and this thing would just destroy people. Um, then you're shooting six darts at like 200 FPS, which is Totally okay, depending on where you're war at. It's more like 120, 140 FPS. I'm sure it's not directly, you know, comparable to that. But it's going to shoot them really freaking hard. That's the point. It's not exactly all that practical. So you have to pump it 20 or 30 times to get it up to pressure and then fire it once. But man, you are guaranteed to tag somebody out. But again, if you want to, you can put compressors in this thing. Yeah, put an air compressor in it. Now, thanks to this thing using an air bladder, it's very easy to have a mechanical switch that will automatically shut the compressors off before the, you know, thing explodes. Because it would, if, unless you turned it off ahead of time. Which is, again, something Boba Lolo had already done. So these things are pretty much endgame for any kind of air blaster, unless you go, again, into HPA, which you could probably do similar things, but uh, you're going to get way less shots. The HPA is dialing your stuff back into where it's just good enough to shoot one dart as far as you need it to without you know wasting all of your air in a couple of shots so yeah no air blasters are awesome this is something that spring powered and flywheel powered could never be matched to and that's why air blasters are cool and again relatively easy to mod if i wanted this thing to shoot a foam dart it would be very easy for me to do such things because obviously i can pump it up right now and it still builds up air pressure so imagine having a dart on the end of that and in a very, very long barrel so it can build up a lot of speed and deal a lot of damage. Let me know what you think about air blasters down in the comment section below. Have I educated you enough to you? Are you now looking for air blasters? And of course, what are the best mods? So there are a lot of mods out there for air blasters and there's a lot of blasters I didn't touch on. There are things that you should be looking for in thrift stores like of course the Busby variety in the Ultimate Missile Blast, the Big Blast, Panthers with white barrels, black barreled ones are very common and they don't shoot darts nearly as well. They have a variety of Air Max blasters like the 6 and I believe the 10 that are also air powered that can be turned up to very, very high velocities. You got things like the Air Tech series and stuff like that. There's a lot of blasters I didn't mention. I was just talking about a couple, but if you see something that shoots air, like with a pump and releases air with a trigger, you might want to check it out. I'm Walkama7. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one.